Roundabouts. Europeans love them, Americans hate them. Since I've moved to the Netherlands, I've gotten used to driving in roundabouts and I've actually grown to like them. But what I wanted to cover today is some of the differences that you have to understand when you drive into a roundabout here in the Netherlands. Uh, there's a lot of things to consider, whether it's cyclists, pedestrians, or cars. And so today I wanted to do a quick video about the roundabout and how I approach it and how I drive in them. Now it's really cold outside, let's jump in the car and get into it. Ah, much better. So since moving to the Netherlands and driving around the Netherlands and different European countries where there's a lot of roundabouts, I've actually grown to really like and appreciate roundabouts. I think they're much more efficient than four-way stops, which are more commonly used in the US and Canada. And in most cases, roundabouts are a lot safer because there's less points of conflict um, and everybody's going in the same direction. And many traffic engineers know this, but in the US and Canada, they still are hesitant to put roundabouts in place. Here's a clip of a town that put a roundabout in place uh, sometime last year, the year before, and it was a complete disaster. Drivers didn't know what to do. Um, they're just not used to them, and it's kind of embarrassing, to be honest. And this is kind of consistent in what I've covered in previous videos about American and Canadian drivers. You drive so much in North America that it's kind of a chore and so anything that makes that chore more difficult people are quite resistant to and don't really like um, a lot of people don't want to drive but they have to drive and so implementing roundabouts which require a lot of things to be considered in terms of paying attention and things to look out for uh, drivers in the US and Canada just don't really like that so I get why they're not popular there but it's a shame that people don't see the benefit of them because people hate four-way stops in the US as well and roundabouts actually kind of uh, eliminate the things that are frustrating about four-way stops but in any case I've grown to really like roundabouts um, I've seen many different variations in different countries that I've driven in but I still think that the ones in the Netherlands are some of the best designed but also some of the most challenging to navigate because there's so many different things to consider um, not only are you dealing with cars which is generally the case for a roundabout you're also having to look out for pedestrians cyclists um, and you have to do all of these one right after the other or sometimes all at the same time and this can be quite challenging especially if you're navigating somewhere and trying to also figure out directions um, you know, tackling these roundabouts can be quite a challenge, but if you can do it, it actually makes things a bit easier. So let me know what you think about roundabouts in the comments below, because I think it's quite controversial. If I talk to some friends back in the US, uh, they don't really like them, uh, but you know, people here, it's kind of a, a normal thing and they don't think much about them. I think cyclists probably also appreciate them because they generally uh, allow for more free flow of uh, cycle traffic. Uh, cars generally yield to the cyclists. So yeah, I think it's a kind of a good thing. So what I want to do now is kind of get to some roundabouts and show you what I look for and what generally drivers need to look for as they approach a roundabout here in the Netherlands or really anywhere else. The thing with driving in the Netherlands in general is is as a driver you are the lowest on the totem pole in terms of priority so pedestrians cyclists trams buses these all have priority over you and so you have to remember that as you're driving the key thing to remember as a driver is the yield triangle also called shark teeth um, and these kind of tell you when you have to give way and these are your key for both roundabouts and even as a cyclist these kind of tell you when you have the right of way and when you don't so as you approach a roundabout, you have to look for these give way or yield signs and the shark's teeth. So roundabouts in the Netherlands, especially in built up areas, generally consist of three phases. You have the pedestrians, then the cyclists, and then the cars. So as you're approaching the roundabout, there's three phases of things you have to look for. And again, each step of the way, you have to look for these shark's teeth. And basically, as you approach a roundabout, first thing you need to look for is pedestrians. Generally speaking, pedestrian crossing is first. And you'll see the shark teeth usually tell you to yield towards pedestrians. So once you've done that, in some cases, the cycle path is right there as well. And so you also need to look for cyclists. So at the same time, you're looking for pedestrians and cyclists. Once you've cleared that, then you need to look for cars. And then you need to say, okay, if there's a car in the roundabout, I need to wait. And if it's clear, I can enter. So those are the steps when you're entering the roundabout. First pedestrians, then cyclists, and then cars. 
And then once you're in the roundabout, there you have to kind of do the same thing in reverse. So I'm gonna do that again. Um, it's not so busy here, so it's kind of hard to demonstrate, but again, pedestrian, cycle path, cars, and then on the way out, all right, let's stop for this pedestrian. So pedestrian crosses, no cyclists coming. I also look in both directions, even though they should only be coming from one direction, you never know. So then you yield to the roundabout, and then you get in the roundabout, and then when you exit, it's kind of the reverse, look over your shoulder, cyclists, pedestrians, both ways, and then you're out. So I don't think much about these roundabouts. I mean, when it's busier, you do have to kind of spend some men mental effort to really you know, focus and, and look for all of these things. But once you kind of get that rhythm down, it's pretty easy to navigate these roundabouts. And it's pretty safe, to be honest. Everybody's kind of looking out for each other. Drivers are looking at drivers. Cyclists are looking at drivers. Eye contact, I think, is really key. Um, it kind of shows that you acknowledge the person or the person on the bike or the car and you're paying attention and I haven't really had any issues, knock on wood. Signaling uh, your intentions and signaling your exit in a roundabout is also key. It also helps drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists understand your motives. What I wanna get to now is a pretty busy roundabout that I've seen in Amsterdam and I've driven through it a couple times and it is pretty crazy, but let's uh, see if we can uh, film that today. So we're almost there. We'll see how good it looks on video. You won't be able to get the full experience that I'm seeing because you can't see everything I can see, but uh, I'll try to make it look kind of, you know, as best as possible. There aren't too many roundabouts in the city of Amsterdam, but this is one of the busiest ones that I've seen. Um, near Vondel Park, there are a few as well that, that can be quite busy with cyclists and pedestrians. Um, but I've been here around rush hour before on a weekday and it's been pretty busy. But today doesn't look too bad, let's see. The biggest thing is just take your time. You know, you're, don't be in any rush. Just yield, yield towards the pedestrians. Okay, no pedestrians, no cyclists coming in either direction, no cars in the roundabout I can enter. In this case, we have a tram that goes through the roundabout, so you have a, a stop light. And then we continue, signal our exit, and then I see a group of cyclists coming along, so that's also good to look, you know, look ahead. Cyclists usually signal, um, so you can see, okay, if they don't signal that they're gonna exit, they're gonna come in my direction. I look both ways, no pedestrians, and then I proceed. So it wasn't too bad, um, but yeah, sometimes it can be a lot busier. So personally, I'm more used to roundabouts. I don't think much about them anymore. I think they're quite beneficial, quite efficient. Um, and I think, you know, in the US and Canada, there needs to be a little bit more adoption because there's a lot of cases where roundabouts can replace four-way stops. My most recent trip to Canada, I saw more roundabouts coming into place. You can see some of that here. But back in my hometown in Florida, in the United States, there's only two roundabouts that I can think of. I'll show them here on Google Maps, but even then, uh, they're not very common. It's extremely rare uh, from what I've seen in Florida. Uh, don't know if that will change as traffic engineers kind of see the benefits and uh, start to adopt more European ways of doing traffic uh, engineering. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about roundabouts? What do you think about roundabouts in the Netherlands? I know there are many different types in the Netherlands that I haven't even covered in this video, uh, maybe in a future video, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Look forward to reading them. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing.